Welcome back to this election special from the state of Karnataka in the city of Bengaluru, where we're in conversation with multiple startups that are making this city the startup capital of India. Why is the state losing out on these big EV investments? Where do you believe are the gaps in policy? So I think what, what Karnataka has to do on is figure out a way to make uh, manufacturing lucrative in Karnataka. If that mm. happens, you look at it, every EV major company mm. is in Bangalore. Mm. Log9 is in Bangalore. Yes. Ether is in Bangalore. Ola yeah. is in Bangalore. Yeah. Simple Energy is in Bangalore. So you keep naming these big companies or the major EV companies, mm. but where do we go for our manufacturing to Tamil Nadu? Yes. That should not happen. In terms of the top two or three asks for the EV industry from the state government, what would those be? I would say three. Okay. Uh, fourth one is always the talent, and then I'll, I'll leave, it to, leave it to my friend over I'll remind here. you to solve that. <laughs> yes. A, we have to incentivize for the EVs to be created here. If the companies are here, they should hmm. manufacture here. Yeah. So manufacturing related. Not and as I said, your subsidy yet. comes when you've done everything and then you go ask for subsidy. You hmm. have to step earlier for hmm. manufacturing to get set up. That's one. Okay. Second is once you have, once you have created that infrastructure for the EVs to be developed and manufactured here, hmm. you want those EVs to be certified here. Right yeah. now, everyone in India goes back to, to Delhi, Delhi to get, to get their vehicle certified, and we have a three-month, four-month queue in front of you know ARI yeah. and others. So you need localized uh, regulatory policies and yeah. regulatory agencies. And third, once you've done that, you have to think about how you're going to stitch the infrastructure for charging. Okay. If I have to set a charger, yeah. it should be I should get the land load location. Hmm. In electricity. Yes. And the electricity, load, yes. you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I need that 15 kilowatt, 30 kilowatt chargers. Yeah. If I can do that, suddenly you get Bangalore or Karnataka become the EV capital. Mm. What we need to do is we have made it as a Silicon Valley of India. Mm. We should make it the EV Valley of India. Well, I do hope the policymakers are listening. But Kunal, let me come back to you from an agriculture point of view. What would you say are the top three, uh, two to three priorities that you'd want, uh, you know, the state governments to focus on to make this a better, uh, you know, situation for farmers and for the industry involved? So I think couple of things that the government should really focus on is is the farmer empowerment part like you know, every single farmer should should be a digital farmer right like, you now because the way that you want to bring innovation at a fast paced manner with 7 million farmers across yeah. like you know, the the entire state like you, know, you have to know exactly where the farmers are what they are doing how many land holdings that they have and so that you can support the farmer in that particular meaningful manner hmm. that's one of the things that should be really focus on the second should be in terms of like you know, bringing innovation like integrating the innovation together into a seamless platform which means that you know, there are several hundreds of startups that talk about but the challenge is have we integrated that together to solve the single problem hmm. agriculture problem though is like a complete uh, like you no know, uh, problem in itself but there are several elements to that and every single startup is trying to solve the, that particular piece in its own ways. If we can integrate that together into a singular platform, mm. then it becomes really helpful for everyone to reduce their investment in creating that asset once again, but mm. creating the focus should be more in terms of creating value. So the government that they have built a fruits platform in terms of digitizing the entire database, that should be open for everyone to come and participate. Anurag, let me toss it to you before we wrap up as well. For the fintech sector, what are the top two to three priorities you'd like the state government to focus on, even in terms of more investments to be made? Because, you know, in the starter policy itself, we've seen them announce a fintech fund and so on and so forth. Now, do you think that's moving in the right direction? Um, I think uh, if you look at the support that we expect from the government, I think it will be in terms of facilitating the, you know, the businesses hmm. to come to these, fin you know, fintechs, right? Hmm. I think uh, in a very big element when you look at a credit uh, transaction is trust, mm. right? So either you can back it up with some sort of a sovereign guarantee okay. or you can build that trust, mm. right, uh, through various associations, through, you know, uh, these platforms where you are, uh, you know, getting everybody together and having a discussion. Mm. And that will basically, you know, lead to the growth of the industry. Mm. So that is one area that I would uh, sort of focus on. The other would be creating access for uh, these startups. Some of mm. these startups, they don't really have access to, let's say, the central government authorities, a lot of these ministries, uh, you know, regulatory bodies. An SRO of sorts. Yeah. SRO is, is industry specific, mm. I would say. Uh, but yeah, overall as well, when you talk about the startup industry in general, not only fintech, yeah. I think creating some of those access will, you know, enable these startups to get in. I mean, see, funding is definitely one important aspect, but I feel a bigger issue with uh, fintechs is the direction. Right, uh, to be able to navigate the complex regulatory and policy environment mm. and be able to serve you know, what they are here for.
Um, and Abhimanyu, finally, your thoughts. What, what do you think are the few low-hanging fruits um, to bridge this gap in the skill and talent requirement, uh, you know, for this newer tech India that is emerging that you'd want the state governments to address? Well, I think connected to the, the financial support, what mm -hmm. we see is a lot of people coming from economic weaker backgrounds mm -hmm. and they have, they have no way to lift out of poverty because they will not get the loans in the traditional way. They do not have a, you know, financial backing basis which they can get an educa educational loan to do the skill first courses which are mm -hmm. available. I think uh, recently we started working with some of the impact funds to just be the guarantor for them, not subsidize their education, but just be the guarantor so that they at least get an opportunity. Mm -hmm. At least I think creation of such educational loan for the skill first programs as well, yeah. if not for all, at least for the people coming from the economical weaker backgrounds, I think that would be a mm -hmm. low hanging fruit which might have big grassroots impact. Okay, on that note, Abhimanyu. Anurag, Pankaj and Kunal, thank you for your time here on CNBC TV 80 and thank you for sharing your thoughts and we do hope the policy makers will take note. On that note, we're going to wrap up this special edition of this Karnataka election special. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 for all your news and updates. For now, it's a goodbye from all of us.